So basically the first question is why? Why am I doing this? As you can see, I have too many of these. Too many of these little boxes that are not so little, that I put all of my special things into that I want to remember, that don't mean anything to anybody else. They just are special to me. And that does not necessarily align with my minimal lifestyle. And right now I've been thinking a lot about like my legacy and my history, especially as this baby is about to come any day now. So thinking about that legacy, thinking about that history has got me thinking about all of these different boxes that I have and how it would probably be like a fun activity to go through them and uh, sort them out and really curate the objects that I want to hold my history. So if you have not heard of Swedish death cleaning, let me be the first to introduce you. The gentle art of Swedish death cleaning, how to free yourself and your family from a lifetime of clutter. There is now an excellent show about this topic. As you start getting into minimalism, as you start like kind of exploring this topic and this lifestyle, this comes up relatively quickly. I really love, obviously, home edit stuff, which is very Americanized, basically just keep everything you want, but put it in beautiful containers and make it look really beautiful. Then there's also the more Asian centric minimalism, which really kind of focuses on a very harsh aesthetic, very Spartan end product. And then there's the Swedes who are always thinking about community, always thinking about next generation. And so this is just like a different philosophy. Essentially what you're doing is cleaning out your possessions so that your family doesn't have to after you're gone. And you may be thinking to yourself, Casey, why does it even matter? You talk all the time about not caring about what dead people think about their stuff. Instead of letting your family go through massive amounts of stuff and have like a hoarder situation on the back end, what you do with Swedish death cleaning is essentially you go through all of your possessions and you get rid of the things that don't really matter to you. Hi, Otis. Otis is not one of those things. Now your house is for you. Your belongings are for you. I've talked about that in other minimalism videos. However, when we start thinking about our personal items that really don't mean anything or have any sort of value outside of our own perception of them, that that's okay. Like you can have things that are just for you. That is what today's video is about. Essentially, there's an idea in the book and really heavily drawn upon in the show about a just for me box. A just for me box is full of the items that don't necessarily have any value for anybody but you. Even your own kids, even your own partner, even your grandkids are just like, what is this? So the things that make you happy and the things that you get to keep and hold on to uh, while you're alive. I have a plethora of things that I don't really think would mean anything to anyone else, but I hold on to them because they mean something to me. And so instead of having like six or seven different boxes of all those things in my house, today I'm going to create the just for me box. <laughs> so let's get started. Why? Why do I have these? These are my cords from graduation, from high school graduation over 10 years ago. What can I do with these? Anybody have any ideas? But it's funny because they like don't really mean anything to me anymore. And that's kind of the thought behind this, right? Is that like as time passes, stuff stops meaning things to us. And you have to think forward and be like, will this mean anything to anybody else? No. So these need to go away. Um, and then there's stuff like this, right? Where like I can take the picture off and although <laughs> it came off very easily, like I don't need the whole scrapbook thing. And then like this, what do I do with this? These are my two best friends. <laughs> and we look so beautiful. Oh, we were so young and thin. <laughs> That's the other thing with some of this stuff is that like, this can go in a photo album. Actually, I think it is in a photo album. It doesn't have to be in like, my sentimental boxes, right? This I will keep. It was the one time I was popular. So what I've done is uh, for this first box is I've gone through real quickly, been like, okay, what do I definitely wanna keep? Just put it to the side. And then the stuff that I'm like, I'm not particularly attached to this is going in another pile, but I'm not putting it in the trash yet. Cause like I might wanna do something else with it. I don't know. So one box down, let's do some more. See, this is tough because like this was a project that I worked really hard on in college, but 
like there's literally no point. Like there's, this doesn't, it doesn't really mean anything to me now. I don't really think it will mean anything to anybody in the future. It's just so much work. But my work isn't represented by the objects that I have in this busted binder. <laughs> the work is in the knowledge I gain from doing it. But my work isn't represented by the objects that I have. The work is in the knowledge I gain from doing it. Timely. I just think this is hilarious. And I still have the little baby tassel. The tassel I will keep. This, this needs to go. I have a ton of my childhood journals. I don't know what to do with them. Starting in the fourth grade and going all the way through high school. Actually, post high school. This one is when I was dating Dan. This is a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be, even for a minimalist. Okay, I have taken a nap and eaten some lunch because that is what I do. I've decided that that was a good thing because it gave me some distance on some of this stuff. I'm actually removing some of these things additionally. And then it occurred to me that not all of the stuff inside my Just For Me bins is mine. Um, so like this big thing is a place where we keep our posters from shows that we've done, my husband and I. That doesn't need to go in there. So like this can stay, but it doesn't have to like be in my bin. Okay, so right now I'm going through my box of cards and letters. I was one of those people that kept every card and every letter that anyone had given me. That stopped. Like I, I stopped doing that a long time ago. But I did just recently go through all of these and I've kept some of like my absolute favorite ones, right? So like this is a happy birthday card from my husband. During COVID, um, a girlfriend of mine and I like wrote letters to each other like Jane Austen style on like these pieces of paper. And that's really nice. And then like the birth announcement of my niece, you know, like that's a big deal. So those are the types of things that I'm keeping. So like what I'm now finding and going through is like old Christmas cards. that I'm like, yes, these were great, but I don't need to keep these anymore. So I get to look at them one more again and then um, recycle them. And then you also find gems like this. <laughs> this is from my dad. I will keep this as long as there is sound. <laughs> okay. So I think I've gotten my cards down to like a reasonable size of cards, maybe, slash letters. So when you're decluttering uh, cards or anything like sentimental, you wanna kinda save it for last because you wanna make sure that you've got your skills really honed in. Um, but I have some really sweet ones from my husband, a couple from my family, some grandparents, and then um, I really love my mom's Christmas cards. So I have like a handful of those from special times in our lives. And then Christmas cards that Dan and I have sent, past Christmas cards we've sent, because I think they're fun. So that's a manageable number. But my pile of like stuff that can go is pretty good actually. I'm pretty happy about that. So that's not a worry. So I'm thinking that I've actually got down to a pretty decent amount of stuff to keep. It doesn't look that unmanageable. So let me clean it up and organize it and I'll show it to you. So I thought I'd take this opportunity while I clean up my empty bins to remind you that I am not perfect. There are minimalists who are cringing right now at how many things I'm keeping. This is just for me. If I can't have one or two boxes in my house of things that I want to hold on to, what is the point of the house? This practice isn't about heirlooms that have been passed down for generations. It is about stuff that you love to pull out every once in a while to look at that makes you happy. It has helped me hone in on some of the things that hold significance for me. There are things that will go in these boxes as my life continues to change, too. So empty out those bins in the attic or garage and see what's in there. Is there a better way to honor and protect those weird little items that live in the back of your mind when you think about your childhood or your early career? What about that one sweet note from a friend? Do you know where it is? I know where mine are. And hopefully, watching me go through my random junk has inspired you to take a look through yours.
Okay, so this is the stuff that I've decided to go somewhere else. It doesn't need to go in my just for me bin. There are other uses for that. Um, here is the stuff that needs to get into a bin, which is still more than I want, but all of those are empty and here's the stuff that can go away. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. Okay, so this really should have been a one-day project, but it ended up being a three-day project. <laughs> so on the second day, I took all of the things that could go away and I put them into bags. Uh, anything that could go in the actual trash or recycling went in that trash or recycling. And all of this stuff is headed to donation land. So now on day number three, I finally got the energy to start putting things away. So I have these white boxes in the top of my closet. So these were the two that I decided were gonna hold my just for me items. So they needed a good wiping out. They've had all that stuff in it for years. Uh, the third box that I have that's like this has my wedding dress in it. So this felt very appropriate. So one of the boxes got a lot of the like paper goods. So the cards, any sort of artwork, anything like that. The other box got the soft goods. So that scarf that I made, um, my Girl Scout, sweaters, vests, whatever, all the college and high school graduation things. Um, and I sorted these things away and put them into those boxes. The journals actually got restocked onto my bookshelf uh, because they just didn't fit in there. So I wiped them down and uh, changed out the little labels and uh, I would say it was a success. So good luck with your Just For Me boxes. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please like it, maybe even subscribe. I hate having to say that, but it really does help a channel, which is incredibly frustrating, but here we are. And uh, if you're looking for other realistic videos on minimalism, check out my channel. <laughs>